What's going on guys? Uh, since my last video did pretty well, I decided I'm going to make another editing tutorial, this time using Visco's new pack 07. Um, this is their, obviously their 7th pack in the series. Um, as you can see, I'll show over here on the side the packs that I have. Um, I have 2, 5, 6, and 7. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go through these with some pictures from some recent photo shoots of mine. I have not really used this pack yet, so I'm going to be kind of learning it as I go, um, just to kind of show you how I tackle using new presets. So let's go ahead, let me double check, make sure I'm recording. And we're good, alright. So let's go ahead and start with this one right here. Um, so. As you can see, the previews, as I mentioned in my last video, up in the top left corner, we're just going to go through and kind of just see what kind of look I want to go for for this. Since I'm thinking with what she's wearing, um, a more like warm tones would probably look better with this. So we're going to probably go with, let's go with something like, um, the Agfa Ultra 50 Warm, that looks pretty good. Actually, let me see. And like I said, this is mostly trial and error, um, depending on just the look that you're going for. Ooh, I kind of like that. There you go, that's perfect. So I went ahead and used the Agfa Portra XPS 160. Um, it's the last one in this row at the beginning. So we're going to go ahead, and then now that we've applied the preset, I'm going to start making adjustments over here on the right. Um, right away I can see, we'll throw up a before and after, her skin tone has changed pretty significantly, which is kind of expected when you throw on a preset, so you're going to want to kind of adjust it. I usually keep the original picture up on the left just so I can kind of see the adjustments being made. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down the temperature a little bit. Bring the blacks down, probably bump the whites up a little bit, bring the highlights down there you go so right about here you can see um, her skin tone does look pretty true to her. now her hands are a little whiter than normal but it is like that in the original picture just kind of how the lighting was hitting it so you can't really do much about this but you can see that there's just a little bit more vibrance in the preset it kind of brings out the colors a lot more so already I'm pretty liking, um, pretty much liking how this is turning out. Uh, I'll probably let me throw a crop on it. Maybe do we'll do four by five. I do this on a lot of my pictures. I think it just kind of. I usually naturally shoot with a lot of headspace. Um, it's just something that I'm always done. I know it's not technically right, but you can always fix things in post when it comes down to that. So let me go ahead and crop it. And then you just make some final adjustments. You can see over here, you can just watch, see what I'm doing. Um, bring the highlights down, bump the contrast, probably the five. So then what I'm going to do now then, since I've gone, gone ahead and got the color that I want, I'm going to start making um, some adjustments. Uh, on her face, smooth the skin. I do this on pretty much every single um, photograph that I take of a person. Just kind of um, gets rid of the distractions. So let me go ahead and bring that down. Bump the highlights a little bit. Then you pretty much go through and paint over the skin. A lot of times though what I'll do is if <laughs> Um, the tools in Lightroom are not sufficient enough to make the adjustments that I want. You can always export or import, I guess, the picture out of uh, Lightroom into Photoshop and then save it back into Lightroom. Um, it's a really quick process. So you can see that did work pretty well, but it did take away some of the facial features that I wanted to keep. So I'm going to bring the clarity back a little bit. You can see that's all the way, that's all the way up. I'm going to find a happy medium probably right about, right about here. I think that's good. 
and then I'm going to go use the clone tool and just clone these out of the way. Make sure that they're on heel actually. That way it doesn't clone the exact thing, it kind of softens up the edges a little bit. So I think that's probably all I'm going to do for this picture. I like the way it turned out. Um, let's move on to the next one. So I actually shot this picture through two windows. So you can obviously tell that with the haze over top of it. So the post-processing and coloring this is going to be a little bit different than I would normally do because once I apply a preset, it's not going to look attractive right away. It's still going to look pretty airy. Um, but with the, you can kind of see the tones in the sky, the sun was setting in them, so you're kind of getting that hazy blue sky. So I'm going to pick probably a cooler preset to apply to this. Let's go ahead and try this one out. So I'm just bringing down the exposure. This is why you should always shoot raw. If you're watching this and you're a photographer and you are not shooting in raw, that is your first mistake and that you, the first thing you should change right away. Shooting in raw will allow you to um, just have a way better time editing. The file size is a lot larger, but um, it is worth it. You can um, bring back color, you can bring back light, you can just make adjustments so much easier. So I'm going ahead and I'm going straight to doing the facial um, features on this picture. Um, go ahead. And you shouldn't feel bad doing this. Um, everybody, every single person, whether they have clear skin or not, will have um, some facial touch-up needs. Um, I even do this on my own pictures before I post a picture of myself. It just removes distractions, like I said. Um, kind of just gives the photograph a cleaner look. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the blacks down because I still feel like this picture would just look better dark. Bump the clarity, probably to about 10. And then maybe bring my temperature up a little. Actually, no, we're going to stay. I think that looks super cool. So there's a before and after. Um, like I said, that was a really quick edit. That was probably only like two, two, three minutes. Um, let me go ahead and make a copy of this. So here's the edit that we had. Um, this is what it looked like as soon as I applied the preset on the right here and that's what it looks like um, after we did all the edits. So it just shows you that um, presets help but you're going to need to make a lot of adjustments and kind of learn this panel over here to the best of your ability. So let's go ahead and move to this picture. Um, right away I can see that there's a lot of headspace and while the architecture up here is cool it's kind of taking away from um, her. So let me go ahead and do like a 4x5 crop bring it in a little bit. Alright, so let's go ahead and do some searching over here and find a new preset that we might like for this kind of look. So this is more like a downtown urban style. So um, 
I'm probably going to want to go, ooh. I wonder what this looks like. All right, already I kind of like this. I don't really like the magenta-ish purple over here, so I can see if I can take that out. I'm trying to find what color that is. Um, on this one, I want to go for cleaner look, so I am going to over here enable profile corrections. This takes away a natural vignette of your lens. A lot of times when you're shooting at a low f-stop, it's about 1.4 to 2.8. Um, there will be slight vignetting on your photograph, so this will take that away and just brighten up the edges to what the photograph should look like. So right here, you can kind of see that. Um, take the lights down. Let's, kind of, let's just look at these other ones here. It's mostly trial and error. Just see what you like. See what fits your style the best. I do like the looks that these. I'm kind of getting the feel that this pack is, has very like minimal um, look to its presets, which gives you a lot of options to tw tweak it and kind of make it your own style. Let me go ahead and. Say let's stick with let's go back up top to these portrait ones. I kind of like let's go with this one. I think this one looks pretty sweet. There we go. So right away I can tell that the natural grain that this preset applied is just just doesn't add anything to this. A lot of times I'll add grain, but when the roughness is that high in the size, I'm just gonna take that down to about 10 and then make it a really fine grain. Nothing too noticeable, but something that will add a little bit of texture to the photograph. I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my temperature, probably about 6,400, 60, yeah, right about there. Um, let's go ahead and throw in a before and after and see what it looks like. So let me go ahead and raise my whites a little bit, bring the highlights down. Bump up the contrast to about five. Some clarity. What I am noticing is that there is a little bit of a blue tint to this photograph, so I'm going to go ahead and take my blues and bring it, bring it down a tiny bit. You can kind of see in her pant, in her uh, boots. I mean, they are black boots, but after I applied this preset, since it was a cool toned preset, I believe, um, I kind of added and changed the blacks a little more cool. So I'm just going to take that almost all the way. We'll take it all the way out. There you go. Let me go down here. Check my sharpening. Bring that to about 20. You can kind of see that that does help. And let me go in and smooth the face. Raise the highlights a little bit, bring the temperature down. Bring the sharpness a little bit on this. Very light. There you go. Quick edit. Um, yeah, so I don't really think that I want to do much of uh, anything else to this photograph. I like how it looks. It's pretty. I want f for more cleaner look on this one. So let me go through and just show you guys the before and afters of these. Actually, do I have one more? Yep, let me do one more. I think my last one I did four pictures, I'll do five for this one. So this was from downtown with my, I was hanging out with a couple friends, walking around, taking pictures, and I just snagged this one before we walked across the street. Um, 
since the buildings, the color of their hair, they all have this very warm tone. I'm going to stick with that on this picture. Um, you don't really want split tones in a photograph. If it will look better cool, you should probably just stick with that. If it will look better warm, you should stick with it. A lot of times when you try to um, go the opposite of what the photograph looks like, it kind of looks like there's like a battle between what look is going on. So I'm going to go in here and let's pick something new. So right away I could tell that this Fuji 160S Alt, um, it had a very nice look to it. I kind of like, um, we'll just do it before and after right away. So let me go in and bring the temperature down a little bit, kind of bump the contrast, bring down my exposure, bring the shadows back up. You can see over here, I'm just making some quick adjustments. I talk through each one, but it's mostly, I kind of have my waist set, and what I like to do with the highlight shot is whites, blacks, and it really changes per photograph. Um, I do want to bring up a little... And like I said, there's a little headspace here, so I'm going to crop that a tiny bit. We'll do like a... Eight and a half by eleven crap on this one. So yeah, that looks pretty good. I really wouldn't do much, it's just a quick edit. You can kind of see the difference. So these presets I really do like these presets. I'll probably be using them more for my street photography. Um, I like the these up here, the portrait XPS and then the Optimos and then these Agfa Ultras, they are pretty good for portraits. Um, Portrait-wise, I would still recommend 06 as the best one for portraits. This one's pretty great for kind of the street type look. Even if it's like street portrait photography, I do see that this is working out pretty well for that. So um, give it a shot, try it out. Um, I do like what I'm going to getting with these. So I'm probably going to try it out more in my uh, upcoming photo shoots and um, see if I see what else I can get out of it so looks like we're wrapping up just about at 17 minutes for this video so thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video